If you feel it. Jason! If you feel it. Jason! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cassette Take, where you can check to wherever you want. But please do not forget to rewind. I'm Ethan. My name is Marie. And yeah, so we uh we've been on a break. We've been on a little little break. Sorry. A little week off. Uh, if you haven't noticed, um, sorry about that. You know, I was on a shoot for a little bit, and uh, Anne Marie was you know working away um, on a few other projects of hers. So uh, we were both fairly busy, and uh, yeah, during that time. The Twisters marketing campaign went on an insane rampage in our local uh, Chicagoland area. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it, it just got us thinking, you know what movie we should probably go see and record our podcast about <laughs> next? Amory, what did we just go see? Twisters! Twisters! <laughs> They're twins! Twins! Oh, man. Wow. And this one, this one actually, we saw it on IMAX yes. in our Bill AMC. Uh, Shout out A- A-List, AMC A-List. Not sponsored. We yeah, wish. We love them. Not, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, AMC, uh, IMAX, and they did a little Q, uh, live stream Q&A with the cast yeah. and the director, uh, which was really cool. That I, was super cool. I didn't know much about the director, and he grew up in Arkansas, Alabama, and he got a lot of tornadoes, and so... It's kind of cool hearing from him and his experience with tornadoes. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's especially when you live in that like south, like uh, southwest area, mm-hmm. you know, more more like northwest or north of the southwest. Yes. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> um, yes. Like during in that tornado alley kind of yeah. know, area like that. You know, I always wonder how their experiences compares to say like ours, you know, like where we live in a tornado Pretty common tornado area. Yeah, it's not as is, common. We just got tor- ten tornadoes last night. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, like two nights ago, Chicago Land was just like we were slamming. We got tornado like. <laughs> uh, I mean, the marketing campaign did really well in Illinois. <laughs> Yeah. It got me to be like, oh, we probably should go see this movie. <laughs> it was like a tornado torpedo. Yeah, you know? uh, but yeah, it was just crazy and like. If I was coming back from that shoot I was just telling you guys about, and I just, I was caught like one stop away from my stop to get to my car, drive home, and go to a place that may or may not have a basement. But you know, the, the, um, the, like I was one stop away, and they stopped my car, like they stopped the train, and they're like, oh, do the high winds, you know, we are going to be staying still. And, you know, what, I'm like, come on, really? Just one more. So I'm just chilling on there. And keep in mind, we're we're used to tornadoes in our area. Yeah. Well, we don't get like a ton compared to the South. Like, yeah, but we still get our fair We share. still get like about like five and everything. Yeah, like five a year or something. Yeah. Um, but still, it was just cool going to this Q&A and hearing about his experience with tornadoes. Exactly. So it was just like comparing our experience to his experience and we got to ask questions but sadly they did not pick ours so ours. <laughs> yeah the, the one gripe i do have with the amc imax q i'm not sure if it's just an amc thing or if it was an imax thing i think it was an imax thing but my one gripe with it is the interviewer did a great job however yeah. i do think the setup should be more primarily surrounded about taking um, you know, the questions of the people that are in those IMAX theaters that are submitted. Yeah. Uh, I think that just makes it all in all like a more immersive experience and like makes it feel more engaging with the cast, um, you know, wh- before you go watch it. It would probably get more people to go to those shows if they knew that that was going to be the case. Yeah. They did ask some interesting questions too about like how this was filmed and shot and like they like Glenn Powell's in this movie and it's like the year of Glenn Powell, right? And yeah, really it's, like it's a little forced in some cases, <laughs> but like honestly, I'm I'm here for most of it. I enjoyed it. And it, it, they like worked with professional storm chasers uh-huh. and that I think that's so cool that they got experience because the first Twister movie, I don't know when you saw it. I saw it in sixth grade. I've seen it, I think, twice since then. I don't remember it too well. But this movie, like, it's kind of a disaster film. And I love disaster films. Oh, kind of a disaster film? <laughs> um, yeah, no. It, it is a disaster 
disaster. It's really a disaster film. So much disaster. Um, but yeah, no, I saw Twister, the first one, when I, geez, too young to remember it the first time I saw it. But the uh, it was recorded on like one of those VHS tapes that, oh. yeah, like it was on TV, I think, or something. But we recorded it like on a VHS tape we had. So I would always watch it on there. And uh, I always remember watching my tiny TV in my my room that would play VHS tapes. I'm like, wow, like I was so scared of it, you know, watching it now. It's like, oh, this is a fun disaster movie. But like, I don't know, like growing up with tornadoes and being like scared of like the possibility of one like crap plowing through your neighborhood at any given moment, like in the midst of the summer. Like, I don't know. It just was really it really hits you. Um, But yeah, you know, I was so I had like good, uh, you know, vibes with the first one i i didn't think it was like a perfect movie or anything like that it was it was just like a a fun disaster film right Mm -hmm. um fun little fact my dad who is who studied meteorology he did not like the first twister (laughs) you would think like he said it's not it's so unrealistic and i'm like well what do you think that the you know the tornadoes look unrealistic how they move or like the uh the technology what what have you and he's like what no it, meteorologists would work together they <laughs> they they, they, don't, they don't like go against each other they work together and put the data together i could see your dad saying that <laughs> yeah. and you know what in this movie it's not meteorologist against meteorologist so dad if you're listening I think you might like this one quite a bit better. It's Tornado Wranglers. Yeah. Oh. You feel the chase it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it absolutely is. We, we wrangle in all these tornadoes. This is like a rodeo uh, tornado <laughs> movie, and it, it works. It it's really works. so much fun. Like, again, as I mentioned, I love disaster films. I love 2012. I love San Andreas. And this one is so much fun. Like, you wouldn't think it would be, but I enjoyed it so much because of the characters that you have. Like, Tyler Owens, who's played by Glenn Powell, is a tornado wrangler. And he's like this YouTuber slash scientist. And he just goes out and shoots fireworks and tornadoes. And I was like, this is, I where's a yeah. truck? <laughs> like, he kind of like Mr. Beast said almost like, yeah. hey, you guys wanted to see that, like fireworks in a tornado well there you go we just did it like you can imagine imagine like the thumbnail of the youtube yeah. video with like his face being like oh. like that crazy you know what i'm talking about like where there's this like crazy tornado and there's this guy like that's right taking a selfie with yeah. him and his face is like like a duck face like uh, like do you know what i'm talking about like it's a very that iconic should, like thumbnail that should be our thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm definitely putting that in but yeah yeah <laughs> It's just so cool. Like I was, I was like, "Where's my pickup truck? I want to go riding." And <laughs> it just got me so pumped to like, I don't even know. Like I felt like it was so real. I feel like the next time I see you, you're gonna have like power drills attached <laughs> to the bottom of your car. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad accident. Yeah, but no, no. Like go- going into this movie, I wasn't really expecting the world, right? No. I, yeah, and I don't think you were either. No. Um, and, you know, so I was just expecting a classic, like, Jerry Bruckheimer as or kind of, like, you know, crazy legacy disaster movie. And this one kind of surpassed my expectations. And I know for a fact it surpassed yours. Oh, I love this film. I walked out and I really, it, my top five this year is going to be so difficult to <laughs> Because I walked out, I was like, that was so much fun. Like, I didn't think I was going to have as much fun. And I think it goes to the characters. And as well as, it's a very smart movie with the ideas that they have to stop a tornado. Because that's like kind of the main idea. They want to stop a tornado. And I felt like it didn't dumb it down for me. It made sense what they were doing, and I love when movies do that. Like, I don't need something dumbed down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it almost felt like they were kind of teaching you at the same time. Yeah, I was like, I, I feel like a meteorologist. 
<laughs> Whether or not the information is like 100% valid, we can't vouch for it. We're not meteorologists. I don't know. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if we were. Who but knows? but uh, maybe we'd be blown away in a tornado. <laughs> or have power drills on the bottom of our vehicles. That was so cool. <laughs> it is. It is so cool. And there's a, yeah, there's something in the movie that really pays off with that. You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll all see it when, when you see it. But yeah, you know. At the beginning, I wasn't sure how this movie was going to go. Like, it kind of seemed a little cheesy at the beginning. And I wasn't sure, like, I'm not sure if I'm vibing with it. It just kind of feels like the first twister, you know, where it's just, you know, like, eh, like good popcorn movie, whatever. But as it goes on, it just built like, like a tornado kind of builds and builds and builds. And it's just like, wow like you can really see the rotation here like of where it's going and like it's looking really majestic and cool and just like i don't know it really comes together as it goes on and i really love that it it mainly surrounds the main character kate uh who yes grew up chasing tornadoes had a hat to the kind of comes back into this life style i guess and Oh my gosh, it was just so, the way they described a tornado, they talked about like how tornadoes start and everything and how it's, you can kind of explain it, but a part of it you can't explain of when it happens. And it was so cool that people, because most of the time when I think of tornado, I'm like, oh, that's scary. But these people, or the way the movie's written, it made it sound like pretty. I was like... Yeah. What? <laughs> I mean, honestly, whenever we have a tornado in our area or something like that, I always get the, like, that weird, like, after it's gone, right, like, in the fear and, you know, mm-hmm. your survival instincts kind of, like, subside, I always just kind of, like, go on this weird, like, hyper fixation thing about, like, on tornadoes. <laughs> so my YouTube feed will be filled with, like, tornado footage. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, it, it's just so interesting, the beauty of nature and just like the power it has and just what it can create tornado like hurricanes they're neat and like and all that like they're it's just <laughs> but tornadoes well i mean it's just like hurricanes they don't really have a structure other than what you see like on a um like a radar or whatever uh and it's like okay you know it's just really a giant circle um and then it's like other storms i don't know it's not really a form you know other than like say a tsunami with a wave or like other things tornadoes it's like pure wind like that just is fighting with each other but comes together and it's just like they were saying in the movie it's something that's so like distinctly unknown you know and it's right it's literally the only place it can happen is on the surface of our earth Mm -hmm. and we know so little about these things yeah Oh, it's so cool. So I get hyper fixated after that. So I don't blame any storm chaser that's like excited to see a tornado and all that. But they do show an interesting side of like storm chasers. And I never really seen this side of storm chasers from the videos and people I've seen where it's like they go out to help people afterwards. And I'm like, you know what? That's awesome. I I love that. I love that if that's the case for most storm chasers out there. Keep chasing storms. Like, I I always thought it was kind of like a thing where it was just for, pro, like, YouTube the views, et cetera. Or the know. thrill. Yeah, or, like, you know, just get the data and go home kind of thing. But, you know, if there are a lot of storm chasers that have this mentality of, like, helping the people after the storm occurs rather than just get the data, go home, or get the views, I love that. And if this movie promotes that, hell yeah. You know, because... I now have that new perspective and new view. I hope that's because, you know, in the Q&A that we were watching with it, they said that, like, they had a lot of storm, like, actual storm chasers on set that they could use as advisors. So I wonder if that was something that was brought up um, during the writing process. Well, if you think about storm chasers, too, you I, I think of them as, like, just like junkies like they're addicted to it yeah and um yeah i agree seeing that side was so interesting this oh man there's so much i want to talk about this movie but 
I just felt like I was in the tornado. So shout out the VFX team. The soundtrack was amazing. Oh, do not get Ethan started <laughs> on the music the... for this movie. I feel like every time we do a review, Ethan has a little section about soundtrack. So here you go. Oh, soundtrack, score. Who did the score for this movie? Amory, you talk about the soundtrack. Oh, I look it's up... so good. It's all like country music. And I just felt like... It's kind of like Fly Me to the Moon. It was, it's the perfect time here. It's just kind of an a American story. I feel like a lot of people can relate to having a tornado or being in a tornado. And so there's a lot of country music in there. And I think that really helps support it as well. Because when you see, say, storm chasing, I just think like redneck, basically. <laughs> and then like, big darn nigga, yeah. big, big upside oh, down tone to go so, real fast. It's so good. And the the cast, oh my goodness, it's they're so much fun. I want to talk about them more, but I want you to find the <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, I mean, if the Google search here is right, which we all know Google is always 100%, 100%. accurate. 100% <laughs> always accurate. Uh, Benjamin Wallfish. Good job, sir. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard of this guy, but you know what, man? I'm going to have to listen to more of his stuff because this score, it is nostalgic. It is bombastic. It is, at times, straight up swashbuckling <laughs> and, and also whimsical. And it's just like, it's a great combination of all of these things in this movie and you would think a lot of these things don't really kind of go together if you were to make like a score for a movie called twisters but it works so well so seamlessly and man you know shout out to you 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 rocked it it was so much fun it like worked perfectly oh i really enjoyed it and this cast is absolutely incredible like glenn powell uh, David Cornsweet, we have our Superman in here, which yeah. is so much fun seeing him. Uh, the main actress, Daisy Edgar Jones, yep. immediately Ethan and I looked at each other <laughs> afterwards and said, that's Elena Gilbert right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, is it Elena Fisher? Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Elena Fi Fisher. Yeah, Elena Dang Fisher <laughs> from Uncharted. We, we are going to heavily advocate for Cast and fan cast her. Cast her as elena fisher for the next time she's movie. perfect she's like tom allen's age she she wears a certain like color slash outfit in this movie that's straight up from the like first <laughs> slash fourth uncharted game i i please go out for the role of elena like if they include elena in the next uncharted movie please <laughs> <laughs> that would be ideal. Oh, it's so much fun. But, like, really, this cast is so much fun. And I like that in the Q&A, they talk about the preparation that they went through. And I think that was super helpful to this story because it felt so real to me. Yeah, honestly, the point where it felt the most real was the rodeo tornado. Yeah. Um, Without giving too much away, you know, it's kind of like, they're they're at a road like kind of going on a pseudo day almost thing going on, and it's like this kind of time away from a everything that just happened in the area with the tornado and all that, and so it's like okay they're having fun and laying their guard down and you know then you start to feel the wind pick up and like the gradual building of all all of it with uh, the everyone's phones going off like blaring the emergency. Um, Siren, and then you got the siren itself going off, mm -hmm. and I mean, like that is just something you and I know all too well. <laughs> um, you know, it's crazy, like everyone pulling out their phones and looking, even though they already kind of know what it is. And I don't know, there's honestly a weird sense of community when, like, not even a tornado has happened, but like as it's about to happen, mm -hmm. um, and it's not really something you can really perfectly translate by words, kind of, but, like, this movie was able to really translate that to the screen. Yeah. Um, and that rodeo scene definitely was the epitome of that. And they talked about that in the Q&A, too. They talked about how hard that scene was to shoot as well because you have so much going on. So just bravo for everyone because I, I truly felt like I was in it. Yeah, and you know you're really shouting out the uh, 
visual effects team. Yes. And um, a point I would like to make about that is they said in the Q&A that they used shots from like actual tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a lot of it, of course, is there is a lot of CGI, right? But there's, I couldn't tell what was what. Yeah. Because they were able to really not like nail it down with, uh, or hunker down. Get it? <laughs> anyway, um, but <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but no, they were really able to nail it down with uh, what, like a tornado's movements and like, yeah how it just disappears sometimes like out of thin air and just culminates and like how it the tail form like everything about it was just so spot on i feel smarter after watching this movie i'm like yeah i could go stop a tornado oh oh you think <laughs> it's showing <laughs> no. No. oh man <laughs> Oh, I know Jason Storm. Let's go. Where's my Jeep? <laughs> Take your power drills. Like, Get my power drills. <laughs> duct tape them to the bottom of your car. Like, Pretty much. I, I don't have time to, like, get him on there. I need the duct tape. You know, then Jason Storm. Oh, man. No, but we both had a blast with this movie. We, we had twists. A lot more twists than I thought they were going to be in a twister. Twins. They had twins. It's yes. Twins. They had twins. <laughs> they had the fire I mean, NATO. You know what's so funny? We were like mocking that line, and in the movie, I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." I could see you going, "Yeah." <laughs> I was just like, I, I smiled a bit. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, like every time I saw it in the trailer, I'm like, "Oh, I'm kind of sick of that." And then, like in the movie, like it's funny. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah, let's go. Like, hell yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I think Amory. We talked about this movie for like 20 minutes now. We got to give our little movie here a rating. All right. Now, out of 10 Dorothy's, oh. what would you give this movie? 10 Dorothy's. Oh, you know what? And it might just be biased, but I feel like I keep doing this with every single movie that I come out of, but it's it's a solid nine for me. I had so much fun in this movie. It made me instantly be like, oh, shoot. How am, how is my top five going to rank this year? Like, this is going to be on it. Uh, something else defeats it. But I had so much fun. I love the action. I love the, like, disaster. I love that, it, like, it was a thrill. It has a solid nine. Well... Um, I actually thought you were going to give it a 10 for a little bit. I, the way you were, like, coming out of that I theater. Know, I I'm trying to hold the 10 for special things, like Doom Part yeah. 2. But, oh, man, it was... To be fair, you gave Doom Part 2, like, an 11. Okay, so. well, <laughs> it's definitely a 10. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I, I'm I not surprised. That's, that's cool. But what are you giving it? I would give... How many it, Dorothy's? have how many Dorothy's I would give it a see at the beginning of the movie if you were to ask me and like if the five of the beginning of the movie carried throughout I probably would have said like maybe a seven but again as the movie went on it really comes together and <laughs> takes a turn that and a twist that I didn't think it was going to go down and I'm like you know what? Hell yeah. And I felt it and I chased it all the way to get that score up to a eight or nine out of ten. There you go. Yeah, I'm I'm going back and forth about it, but honestly, I would let's stick with nine. We'll we'll, we'll round up. Hell yeah. Ethan's roundup. Let's go. Uh, I loved it. I didn't really enjoy yeah. it. But hey guys, did uh by the time you're listening to this, have you seen Twisters? Were you part of this little Q&A experience that, the, that IMAX did here? Uh, did you guys like it? Do you have any critiques think, thinking IMAX could do something better with it? Or, like, did you just go see the movie? Did you see it in a Dolby? Did you see it in a 4DX? Oh, yeah. Let us know how that was. That must be crazy. We want to go. <laughs> we might go. We have a 4DX theater local, but we'll see. But anyway, hey, 
whatever your takes are, let us know what your takes are on our tapes. There you go. <laughs> now, fast forwarding on to our next topic. Oh, do we have to talk about it? Yeah, we. Well, we did say that we would always have to bring it up. Okay. Like if we would have what? to see a full review once it was all One out. More time. That we're done talking about this. Oh, uh, boy. Until we get a season two in that. No, 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 no. The Acolyte finished last night. Yay! Acolyte is done. Season one is no, done. No, it's done, Ethan. They're not making a season two. I don't know. There's like a decent amount of people that actually really, really liked it a lot more than, you know, say, I can assume you and I did. Yeah. Because we honestly, I didn't really get your thoughts on the past couple of episodes of The Acolyte. Yeah, I think this is the problem I have with it. They could have gone in so many different directions. So, you know what? Open spoilers. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Spoilers. Listen up. They could have gone in so many different directions. Like, um, Kumar? Kumar? I don't know how to Kamir. write Kamir, sorry. I don't care enough. <laughs> yeah. They, his story was interesting, and I, I wish we kind of got to see him a little bit more, even his perspective, I, uh, or even, like, the Osha and May thing, like, they're the same person, so maybe that's why May kept switching back and forth, because she was feeling the pull from Osha. There's just so many storylines that I'm like, why didn't you go that way? Like, that, that's so much more interesting to me, and... It, again, it just comes down to the writing. It was in good writing, and it sucks, and Star Wars do better and reboot your whole thing. <laughs> there, There's a lot to take out from that. Um, but, but I would say that it felt like, now that we have this whole thing in a whole season one, mm-hmm. it just felt like there were a bunch of first drafts of these episodes and then they didn't bother to do the next draft. Like, and they did, they, yeah, they just like did one draft and they're like, okay, we just need to get this out there. And again, going back to what we talked about previously with the Bob Chapek effect, where it's like quan- quantity over quality. And uh, which is unfortunate, but you know, this show is obviously a victim of it. And um, we, uh, we see that. This show suffers from, like you were saying, poor writing because of that. Um, but overall, the concepts that, you know, we see, it's like some of these are really cool concepts. And don't get me wrong, there are some great moments throughout the show. Yeah. But there are also really dumb moments throughout the show. And then there are moments that just are adequate. You know, like, it doesn't feel like the entirety of this show kept me engaged. It didn't feel like say and or where I wasn't sure about it at first but as it went on I just got more and more engaged and interested um in fact I'm doing a rewatch of Andor and I did the I watched the first few episodes of that before watching the final episode of the Acolyte Mm -hmm. maybe that made it seem worse than it actually was but it's just like I'm looking at this thing I'm like this is it's night and day like Andor is it's like how do you go from this to like approving something like this, knowing what you're capable of, to making something like the acolyte, it's just crazy to me because the showrunner is, a, she's good. Yeah, like, Leslie Island, and it shows here like at points. Yeah, you can see it's almost like a Aquaman two. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe the acolyte. It feels like Aquaman two, where there are glimpses of like a good movie trying to break out of a bad movie Mm -hmm. and this feels like that it feels like a tv a really good tv movie trying to break out of a bad show yeah it's just disappointing because like you mentioned there's good stuff in here like the lightsaber turning red once ocha picks it up like that's super cool like the i i stand by this i don't understand what other reviewers are saying but the star wars lightsaber fights in this I really enjoyed them. I thought they were really cool and the action of it, especially Soul versus Kamir at the end. Like, I, I, I thought it was cool. And so there's parts of it that I'm I, I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed because you had such a 
like, again, <laughs> I hate to keep bringing this up, but we were told one thing about the Acolyte, and it was all about the Sith. I feel like we barely even got that. Yeah, and it was teased more at the end, and it's just like, the final episode, I'm like, why didn't we get more of these vibes throughout the like the majority of the yeah. show? It would have been more interesting to follow like one specific like OSHA or like I don't. Get it's it. like if you're gonna make these characters that pivotal or like interesting, you know, like in or heavily involved in your story, like Plagueis and Noda oh and uh, Sidious. It's like if you're going to go down that route, go all in. People would love. I feel like Leslie Highland would have thrived in doing like a story about like the tragedy of Darth Plagueis and like the political implications of what Palpatine was going through during that time and all of that, like that, w I feel like she will have thrived in doing something like that. And instead we're focusing on Osha and May who are like, <laughs> what the same person, like, uh, but I mean that, that's that, that not even so, explain. Like it's so stupid. It's just very ge too general for me to be like that interested in. And I, I, they don't do a good job of like maintaining interest because they don't really capture your attention with anything. And I'm sorry, like there again, like we're saying, there are good moments. And if you're enjoying, if you enjoyed this show, like you enjoyed good season you. one, that's awesome. We're both very envious of you. But like, and if you hate it, I get you. Yeah, we get it. I mean, I don't hate it. I think it's the equivalent of a. Star Wars comic book I just haven't had like the interest to read that it exists and maybe it's decent but like I it just doesn't interest me to read more it just sucks because like even like when they there's stupid cameos in this like it, it was like why didn't you focus on like Darth Plagueis or I I just don't get it and it, it's so sad and it makes me sad for Star Wars because I feel like this is Plaguing a lot of stuff. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, headphone listeners. <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get why you're not like playing into that a little bit more. Like, I, I we need nerds to run Star Wars at this point because I just feel like they're giving this stuff to people that don't know the source material as well. And I think it would be cool to get people who know the source material into it i mean or just make sure that the people that you do give it to like are telling the right stories yeah because i mean it feels like leslie highland had a good concept here like a good story like hell even if it was with me and Asha and like a semblance of something that we ended up getting I still would have been down for something like that. Like, what if it's, like, something with the dyad of the Force that we see in the sequels or something mm -hmm. like that, and this is how it originates. Um, but, like, it's just not executed well here. And it just feels like, it, again, a victim of the JPEG mentality era. And maybe Leslie had to deal with that. We don't know. And she probably signed an NDA where she can't explain, you know, any of that to us. Hopefully, hopefully one day she'll be able to explain it. Yeah. And I mean, again, there's a lot of positives in this show, but it's just the negatives kind of yeah, out there. Favorite. Yeah. But I will say about the lightsaber fights, the choreography, excellent. I honestly think though that the lightsabers didn't really have that much light to them at times yeah they looked unfinished yeah it looked really unfinished yeah. um like i mean you look back at the original trilogy where it's like vader hitting luke's lightsaber flash like half of your screen is just covered in a giant flash mm -hmm. and here it's like like as if you're playing lightsabers with your brother in the backyard and in the middle of daytime <laughs> like i i don't know it it just it didn't work and maybe like you were saying it, it was unfinished but like a majority of the show felt it an unfinished spit galactic quest <laughs> we're sad about this yeah but again if you liked it cool didn't cool if you think it's <laughs> adequate cool 
we got more Star Wars content that's not under the JPEG regime in route. So we'll Hopefully. see. So we'll see how it all goes. But um, yeah. <laughs> Overall, Amory, out of oh, ten, out of ten unfinished lightsabers, what would you give the entire entirety of the Acolyte season one? I mean, it's a four. Like for me, it's just below par. Again, there's good stuff and there's cool ideas, but it's just not executed well. And the writing sucks, and I feel bad for everyone involved because I truly think this is not the show that they set out to make, and that sucks. Yeah. So, I'd give it a five out of ten. Dang like God. again, I I probably view maybe a little more positives than you do with it, but um, I still do have I'll share a lot of the feelings of negativity towards yes. it, um, which is unfortunate, but you know whatever. Uh, yeah, but hey guys, it's done. It's been not executed. Nine hundred years. Yeah. Do you guys want season two? Do you guys <laughs> not want season two? Do you want to see this burn in the fire of, uh, like, say the wherever the Jedi go into when they're like burned to ashes, like Qui Gon was at the end of Phantom Menace? <laughs> um, whatever, like you guys are thinking about the acolyte. Let us know your takes on our tapes in those comments down below. Let's get to more positive. Let's get to more positive stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with that, Amory, let's okay. fast forward and have you introduce our next topic. All right. So there's going to be some. This is just first off, this is not true. It could be true. There was a huge Disney leak, and the main stuff that leaked a lot was Marvel titles. Now, again, these are not confirmed. We have D23 coming up. We have other programs coming up, so we'll see when these get confirmed. But there was a lot of things that were kind of announced. So there was a Doctor Strange 3, a Thunderbolts trailer, which we kind of figured we were going to see a... Shang-Chi 2, a Thor 5, a Young Avengers. There's just a ton of stuff that's being announced right now. Now, the thing is, again, we don't know if these are true or not. Marvel has been kind of turning a point. I can see them turning a new leaf at this point with Deadpool 3. Hopefully that turns out good for them. Agatha, we'll see. But a lot of these titles that are rumored, I could see happening. The big one that I can't, I don't think they're going to do a Young Avengers, which sucks because I think a Young Avengers would be cool. Oh, you just like coming of age stuff. I do like coming of age stuff, but the comic book is actually really good. Highly recommend the Young Avengers. It's comic just book. coming of age stuff. Stop it. <laughs> it's good. I like the Scarlet Witch and Billy and Tommy stuff in it. I think that's cool. Stop. Don't knock it off. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm I would I really hope Shang Chi too. That's something that you and I both really enjoy. Yeah, Shang Shang Chi uh is definitely one I've been a lot of us have been waiting for the sequel for it's for been quite like some a time. While. Yeah, um, you and me and like a buddy of ours, we went to go see that movie and we loved coming out of that movie. You know, it was great. We had a great time with it. Uh, oddly enough, I've not rewatched it though, and usually I watch a Marvel movie like at least maybe, you know, once or twice afterwards, and uh, you know, get better vibes for it. But I don't know. I felt like I got like awesome vibes from that movie, like the one time I saw it, and I'm like, wow, you like, I don't know. I was so like satisfied with it. Yeah, so. I really like that Doctor Strange three. I really hope they do that as well. I really like the Doctor Strange movie. One of the other things, I'm interested to get your take on this. They announced a Scarlet Witch movie. And I don't know, I'm I'm on the fence if that's real or not. Because I don't know if I see Elizabeth Olsen coming back for it. Well, is it Elizabeth Olsen or is it going to be someone else? Because it's part of like the X-Men world that they're trying to introduce. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I feel like. Deadpool and Wolverine is probably going to introduce some stuff with the X-Men that's going to be like really universe changing and all that to where we're going to get like 
new cast members for these roles that we once had in the original MCU. You know what I mean? So it's like we might get a new Quicksilver. We might get a new um, Scarlet Witch. Uh, and then maybe some other characters that have gone and pass, you know, but I don't know. That's an interesting theory. I never really thought of that because to me, how much is in Deadpool 3? That's the thing we don't know. And so are they going to have enough time to be like, this is your new Quicksilver. This is your new Scarlet Witch. But it's an interesting theory to think about. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I... I kind of wish we had a better ending for uh, Scarlet Witch than what we got with Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. I mean, overall, I enjoyed that movie quite a bit, a lot more than the average audience member did. But, you know, the ending didn't really leave the best taste in my mouth. Um, So, yeah, I would say that if there is a redeeming factor to, say, you know, Elizabeth Olsen coming back to... uh to do um, Scarlet Witch, like a Scarlet Witch movie. Was it a movie or TV show? Movie. Movie, then I'd say, like, there's her chance to uh, get a better ending for the character. Well, and also, we talked about this when we first were going to go see Doctor Strange 2. I was convinced that they were going to pull a House of M situation instead of saying, no more mutants, yeah. let them, let there be mutants. And that didn't happen, so maybe that's how you introduce the X-Men if you do a film like that. That actually is so cool. Uh, I I feel like that's too on the nose. But it's so cool. House of M is such a great storyline. It is. It is. Again, poor Peter Parker in that (laughs) book. Poor Peter Parker in every comic book. But, yeah. He gets screwed. He really gets screwed over. Um, But... This is about you, Peter. It's about Scarlet Witch. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just super interested. Again, I think Marvel is turning over a new leaf. I really hope Deadpool 3 knocks it out of the park. I hope Agatha uh, covering the chaos or Agatha. Agatha all along is good. We'll have to see. But I'm just super excited. And I hope Marvel can win because I need some wins now for Disney. (laughs) Yeah, we... uh... I feel like we're kind of almost out of that filtering point, like of uh, the going to like just about out of the strainer. Yeah. Of the JPEG era, you know, so like, we'll we'll see uh, where we're going to go from here. Cross fingers. Cross them fingers. (laughs) Do not unlock them until we get Andor season two or or Deadpool three. There you go. Yeah. Lucasfilm, Marvel, same situation. <laughs> anyway, is is that like all the... Stuff? That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Amory, list off everything that you mentioned. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was not like too like engaged with with this topic oh, God. but but let yeah. us know what you think from the disney hack is gonna happen do you think dr strange 3 is gonna happen do you think shang chi 2 is gonna happen what about scarlet witch do you think a young adventures is gonna happen also let us know what is definitely not happening in your opinion like this armor wars film sorry it's not happening we'll see but let us know in our comments down below your takes on our tapes so yeah. That'll That's, do it. That'll do it for us tonight. Let's go chase some storms. We gotta go chase some storms. Hopefully uh, we'll get back home without anyone halting us due to high winds. <laughs> Ethan, let it go. No. <laughs> You're gone. Oh. Am I? <laughs> that Ethan never came up. No, <laughs> no we're in that game on existential on it. Um, Besides needing therapy, Ethan and Anne-Marie... We'll need to go. But, hey, we hope... Thank you for joining us on this episode of Cassette Take. Oh, no. Uh, we we uh, hope you haven't ejected this far into the podcast. But if you have, please don't forget to rewind. I've been Ethan. I've been Amory. And if you feel it... Chase it! Yeah! Hell yeah! Love y'all. <laughs>